here comes Gavin Brindley. The Blue Jackets may have fallen flat on their faces against the Nashville Predators, but things are about to get exciting for the future of this Blue Jackets squad, and we're going to talk about that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Track. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day, even if it is uh, 4 p.m. when you are listening to this episode. Uh, we are free and available on all podcast platforms over on YouTube and on Sirius XM. And uh, I also have to know today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use promo code locked on NHL to go to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. So see Sleeper's terms of use for details. Um, got a lot to talk about today. Uh, some lots of very exciting things. Um, I was going to do a recap of the uh, the Predators game but quite frankly there's like two interesting things that happened in it so we'll talk about those um but we're gonna start off by talking about gavin brindley who um i got the news earlier today that he was heading to columbus to sign his elc a couple hours later it's official uh he signed it i think about 20 minutes before i started recording this podcast so it is hot hot news fresh off the presses um this is so exciting uh i i kind of talked a little bit over the last couple of weeks about like I wouldn't be mad if he went back to Michigan. I wouldn't be upset if he signed. Um, now that he has signed, I am psyched. Uh, I am I am really, really pumped about Gavin Brindley. Um, he, I think, was maybe one of the steals of the draft all around. Um, I know everyone was really excited about Fantilli falling to third overall, but Gavin Brindley falling to 34th, like he was a top 10 player in the draft for me last season. So getting him at 34th, I think, was was really, really exciting. Um, and he put a lot of doubters to bed this season, I think. A lot of people who said that he was just a product of Fantilli and um, that he was going to have a down year this year in college. And uh, he did the opposite of that. Um, in his freshman year with the University of Michigan, he had 38 points in 41 games. Um Last season, or this this season that's just finished, played 40 games and had 53 points, including 25 goals. Was a uh, was named the Big Ten Player of the Year for uh, for the NCAA or for the the Big Ten Division Conference, whatever it is. Um, was named to the first team NCAA All American squad after the conclusion of the Frozen Four and. Uh, he finished eighth in the entire NCAA in scoring as a guy that is five foot nine and drafted in the second round. Like he's, you should be really, really excited for Gavin Brindley. He's got no fear. He's not super physical. So he's not like, um, I feel like the, the, the comparisons are going to be made to a guy like Trey Fixwanski, who's a smaller guy that has no fear or a guy like James Malatesta. Both of those guys are, you know, Later draft picks, um, and I think have lower ceilings than than Gavin Brindley. Um, but I think people are going to compare those guys because they're also smaller guys. Um, Gavin Brindley's not super physical. What he is is an extremely good goal scorer. Um, skates at a hundred miles an hour or zero, and there's nothing in between. He's great on the four check. He's pretty reliable in the defensive zone. Um, but like. The energy, I think, is is the thing for me that I'm really excited about with Brindley. He doesn't know how to do anything less than 125%. Um, he is always, always, always moving. Um, and quite frankly, brings something to this team that I don't think they had this season. Um, barring, like, barring a couple of flashes from some guys, but... Um, I'm really excited to see this kid make his NHL debut. And I'm going to be on a plane during this NHL debut tomorrow. So I'm really mad about that. Um, so please no one spoil the spoil the game. I'm going to watch it when I land on Wednesday morning. And then I will give you guys my, my thoughts on his NHL debut. But um, man, I'm hyped about this. Um, and I was kind of like 
trying to temper my expectations here because if he did go back to Michigan, like I legitimately wasn't going to be annoyed if he went back to Michigan. I think him going back would not have been a bad thing at all. I think um, giving him a chance to be the guy in Michigan, um, obviously with Frank Nazer signing his uh, his ELC with Chicago, um, uh, I think signs appointing to Rutger McGrawty, signing his ELC with Winnipeg. Um, Gavin Bridley was going to be the guy on on this Michigan team, and I think that probably would have benefited him. But I can I can see why he signed his ELC. I think he wants to turn pro. I think he wants to play with Fantilli again. Um, and I think, quite frankly, I think he's ready. Like, I think there are definitely things that he could have worked on in college, but I don't think it's something that he can't work on at the NHL level next year, if that makes sense. Um, one thing of note, I know um friend of the show, uh, Cleveland Monsters reporter, Dean Weinheimer, was really excited for him to join the Monsters in their playoff push, which is what I assumed was going to be happening as well, um, because uh, who was it? Oh, I believe it was Florian Jacki signed his ELC and then uh, signed an ATO with the Laval Rocket, was eligible to join the Rocket immediately, um, and his ELC starts next season. There's been a couple of, of instances of that. I feel like Dylan Duke, who also just scored from, uh, who also just signed out of Michigan um, with Tampa Bay, is is in the same boat. Um, his ELC starts next season. Um, and it does feel a little bit silly to burn a year of an ELC for one one NHL game because that's how many games they have left. Um, and it also makes him in, 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 el, ineligible for the Monsters playoffs um, because he's on the NHL roster now and wasn't on the AHL roster at the trade deadline. That's kind of how how that works. So last uh, the the comparison, I think the best comparison probably is um, Zach Wierenski who signed his ELC and then slid it to the next season, went to Cleveland or Lake Erie at the time on an ATO, which is an amateur tryout um, contract. And then he was eligible to play for the entire Monsters playoff push. Gavin Brindley is not doing that. He is going straight to the NHL. They're burning a year of his contract. Um, and I do think that that was probably a big part of why he signed, in that it pushes him a year closer to... Um, being a UFA, and I suspect it was a case of either I'll either burn the first year now, or I'll go back for my junior year because that was pretty much, as I understand it, that was the conversation that happened with um, with Kent Johnson when he signed a couple of years ago. Was people were like, "Well, why why are you burning a year of his ELC for eight games?" Um, and it's the same kind of thing. It's um, they. That's that's what they wanted. That's you know he he was like right. I'll either go back to Michigan, or I'll burn a year of my contract, and I'll come and I'll play my eight games now, as opposed to signing his ELC and then waiting an entire summer to get in to get involved. Um, I respect it. Like that's sometimes that's that's what you give up for having college players do that. Um, is sometimes you have to burn a year of that ELC. So Gavin Rinley will be under contract until the 25-26 season. Yes, because next year is 24-25. He'll be do a new contract at the end of the 25-26 season, which um, I believe is also when Adam Fantilli's contract runs out. So that could be an expensive, uh, an expensive summer for the Blue Jackets. I'm just pulling up their um cap friendly now to see what that um see what that looks like. Uh at the end of the 25-26 season um the only other player that's going to need a contract then is uh Erica Branson is uh, is a UFA that's the end of his contract. Um and then that's that's really the only uh the only big name guy that is going to be needing a contract this that summer. So I feel I feel fine about it. I don't think either of those like the Fantilli, I imagine will probably get locked up long term. Um, he'll probably do the the Tim Stutz, the Jack Hughes contract of hey I'll sign for nine million for eight years or whatever instead of doing the bridge deal that Austin Matthews did or you know something like that. But um, it's not like this summer where they have like a bajillion RFAs that they need to figure out. Um, it's going to be pretty much just Fantilli and um, and Brindley 
as far as I can tell, unless, you know, someone like John DeMay or Luca Del Babalouz has a huge breakout season this upcoming season. We'll see. Um, but so excited for Gavin Brindley. Um, we're going a little bit longer on this segment than I than I meant to, but uh, I'm just, I'm really excited to see what his NHL debut looks like. And I, again, tempering expectations. He's not going to go on the ice and immediately be the best player. Um, he won't be playing with Fantilli. So I'm really interested to see who he does play with. Um, on a, on a, a little related note, um, before we kind of move on and talk a little bit about um, James Malatesta's first NHL goal, which is one of what I wanted to talk about next. Um, Boone Jenner back at practice. Um, Elvis Mozikin's also back at practice. I don't know if either of those guys will play tomorrow. Uh, I feel like it's probably more likely that Jenna will play than Mozlikens, but it's really up to Jenna. I think I think he probably will play, um, but I won't be upset if he if he doesn't because you know obviously there's no timeline to to his kind of absence from from the team. Um, hopefully, he and his wife are doing okay. Um, but if, if Jen is back in, then you add Brindley in, um, and, and I think the team is suddenly, especially if Carolina, and we'll talk about this in tomorrow's episode, if Carolina decides to rest guys to prepare for the playoffs, like, this could be a fun game to watch. Uh, and again, very upset that I will not get to watch it live, uh, unless I play a million dollars for playing Wi-Fi, which is not out of the question yet. Um, let's, let's take a quick break, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, the Predators game on Saturday, uh, or specifically, we'll talk about a couple of players in the Predators game on Saturday. That's what's coming up next here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I'm going to tell you about eBay Motors, because passion, drive, and patience is the winning formula for championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and even more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. They have over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, so you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time, or you're going to get your money back because eBay Motors wants you to burn rubber, not cash. They've got all of the parts you need at the prices you want, so it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. We're very excited about Gavin Brindley here, but uh, we're excited about a couple of other guys as well. Um, so the, the the National Predators game started so well and then got worse as the game went on. But uh, there are some some bright spots in that. And like, frankly, the brightest spot for me was James Malatesta's first NHL goal. Um, really, really exciting. Um, I think he's been... He's been a real surprise of the kind of the last handful of um handful of games. For me, I he's kind of been about what I expected him to be, which is just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but he seems to have earned some some trust from the coaching staff, which as we all know, based on what they've, you know, based on what we've seen from some ice time this season, it's tough to do. Uh, but he was he was rewarded. He had a goal and an assist. Um, against the Nashville Predators. Very, very fun. Um, the bottom six really were the only two lines that contributed in this game. Um, Justin Danforth with three assists. Alex Texier got a goal. Um, Te- Trevor Clancy got two goals. I want to talk about him in uh, in a minute here. And he did that on, under 11 minutes of ice time as well. So um, good for him. It's uh, it's getting It's getting strange in the NHL, in the, the Blue Jackets lineup, but really fun to see James Malatesta get rewarded. I think he's worked really hard since coming up, uh, and I know that hard work is not the answer to everything in the NHL, but I do think that sometimes guys can just willpower their way to an NHL goal, which is what he did, or even willpower their way to, like, a, a permanent NHL role. I suspect he probably he he's he's going to go back down to Cleveland after this um i don't know who they're going to send down to make room for Jenna and or Brindley um th- those are the only two guys that i think will probably get added back into the into the lineup um but 
like my guess is probably that uh, Malatesta goes back down, and Trefix Volansky probably goes back down. Maybe they send Putcher down instead of instead of Malatesta to reward to reward him for his uh, for his goal. But the monsters slowly getting guys back. Uh, I do want to give a, a, again. I, I talked about this a little bit just, uh, just uh, a second ago. But shout out to to Trefix Volansky. Two goals in less than eleven minutes of uh, of ice time um, has kind of struggled in this call up. Oh, this last like little little run of call ups and send downs and call ups and send downs, um, but I I I think he's he was rewarded again for hard work. Um, I still think that he probably deserves a better look at the NHL level than he's gotten so far. He's been so good at the NHL at the AHL level, and it really feels like he his leash is so short. Even on a team like the Blue Jackets at the end of the season when nothing matters and they're playing mostly AHL players anyway, um, it'll be... I just I, I would like to see more. More from, from the coaches in terms of Trey Fuchs-Walansky. Um, looking at the... Um, looking at some of the, the natural stat trick things, um, the Malatesta, Danforth, fix Wolanski line uh, combined for seven shot attempts, four and two against. So that's almost 80% success rate in terms of course you four percentage. They only play together for about six minutes at even strength. Um, fix Wolanski uh, play, uh, they, they swapped Pucha and Malatesta around. Um, neither of those lines were as effective. So they put Pucha on the Danforth line and then Malatesta played with Corelli and Olivier. Um, I, I don't know why they did this, but they did. Uh, and again, neither of those lines were as good. I thought that the top six was fine, but didn't got unlucky. Uh, I think goaltending, like Jack Greaves was allowed to have a night off. Um, not that that's what he did, but looking at where all of the goals came from, a a weird. He, I don't know. It looks like the Blue Jackets mostly just kind of let the Predators do what they wanted in front of the goalie, which has kind of been a problem all season. And the goalie has sometimes been good enough to to deal with that, and sometimes has struggled. I think Jack Reed probably struggled a little bit um, against the Predators, which is fine. Again, this is what his seventh NHL game ever. Um, he had an 838, so six goals on 37 shots, which is not the Jet Greaves like numbers that we've kind of uh that was his ninth NHL game ever. So like he can only do so much, you know, and even after that, he still has a career 910 save percentage. So even after a bad game like that, he's been so good in in the limited action that he's seen this season that I'm I'm like, he's allowed to have one bad game, you know? Uh Overall, like I said, not a not a great game, not the best game that I've ever seen from this team, but they're ready for they're ready for the the summer to to happen. I think um, in terms of defensemen, I'm just pulling up. Shockingly, the Provorov and Gabranson duo got beaten up pretty severely. Um, Severson was great. Uh, Nick Blankenberg was was pretty good um both of those guys created more offense than they gave up which is not usual for uh for the the blue jackets specifically zach Reinsky, again excellent uh 30 was on the ice for 32 shot attempts four and 18 against um and again didn't uh, didn't give up a lot of offense the blue jackets actually out offensed the predators in this game um but Sometimes a sometimes a goalie. Sometimes a goalie is good, is the thing. Um and it wasn't like um God, who was it? It wasn't Yuzi Cyrus, I wanna say, but it was um it was Yuzi Cyrus. Uh yeah, UC Cyrus uh made thirty one of thirty five saves. So like it wasn't even like the goalie stole the game for them. Just sometimes these things happen, you know? Uh, overall, they kind of fell flat a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and, and not rip into them too much for that. But shout out to James Malatesta, first NHL goal, um, first multi-point uh, career game in the NHL, I believe. Um, 
and shout out to Terrific Blansky for finally getting off the schneid this season uh, and scoring not once, but twice. Congratulations to those guys. Shout out to just to Dan Forth for his three assist night. And uh, uh, hopefully everyone else gets in on the scoring action tomorrow against the Carolina Hurricanes, um, which we'll talk about in tomorrow's episode. Uh, we're going to finish up today with just checking in on some uh, some prospects and one prospect in particular, uh, Denton Matejuk just kind of went sicko mode a little bit against the uh, Swift Current Broncos last game. So I want to talk about that specifically and also check in with some of our other uh, prospects that are still doing playoffs. That's coming up in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I've got to tell you about Sleeper because the season is almost over and the less said about the Blue Jackets performance, the better, quite frankly. But regardless of that, the Blue Jackets did not win big, but you can by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports and especially Daily Fantasy hockey because you can win 100 times your cash and it's so, so easy to do so. Entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether guys like McDavid, Ovechkin, Crosby, McKinnon are going to record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your money, all you need to do is get eight of those player stats right. You heard me right, Blue Jackets fans. Just get eight questions right, and you can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll go to a one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets. Uh, we're going to finish off real quick with some prospect roundups. Um, we'll start off in uh, in Finland with the Liga, where Oliver Keskinen and Tapera are still. Uh, Still the team to beat. Um, they are in the final of the league of playoffs. Um, they beat Kalpa in the semifinals four to one. Um, so not particularly close. They will be playing uh, the Pelicans, who are the third seed in in the league for the uh, for the final. So I'm sure that's going to be uh, that's going to be really interesting. That starts. Um, on Saturday, the final start. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on on that. But again, uh, Oliver Keskinen has been limited ice time, but has been doing um, doing shockingly well. Again, for a seventh round draft pick um, and a twenty year old in uh, playing in the Liga. The fact that he has uh, he has eleven point sorry seven points in eleven games so far and had twenty seven points in fifty four games this season for for Tapera in the Liga so like he's doing just fine which is really fun um he might be a I don't think he's going to be a real difference maker for the Blue Jackets but I think he could be a, a difference maker for the Monsters when he uh, when he comes over which might be probably won't be this off season but might be next off season so again well Kesk Keskin and watch is not as exciting as Brindley watch but we will definitely be uh, be on it um flipping over to North America uh the Ottawa 67s are down to nothing to the Oshawa Generals which is a little bit what i expected they lost the first game 4 to 3 um Luca Pinelli had uh, had a goal in that game, uh, and again, continues to be the leader for that team. Um, and then they lost six to one most recently. Uh, he did not feature on uh, on the score sheet. He did take a roughing penalty, which is very funny considering he's like five foot eight or five foot nine. Um, but that's uh, that's it for him. He's got one goal in two games versus the Generals this season. Uh, this this series. Playoff series is going back to Ottawa. I believe tonight actually is when the uh, is when the next game is. So hopefully they can uh, they can pull out a win on home ice. Uh, the London Knights are up two nothing against the Kitchener Rangers. Uh, Max McHugh, I think I mentioned, had a goal and an assist in game one uh, when they beat Kitchener five to three. They just beat them five to one in game two uh, on Saturday night, and uh, Max McHugh with Another assist. So again, continuing to continuing to be fun. Um, he did get kicked out of the game 
uh, for unsportsmanlike conduct at the start of the third period. But sometimes, sometimes that happens, you know. Uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on on how that series is going. But my, I expect that um, London will will finish off the Kitchener Rangers in uh, in handy fashion. Um, I flipping over to the the WHL. I have a minor correction. Uh, to issue, which is that I tweeted that um, Denton Matejok had 15 points. Uh, I think I, I tweeted that he had 13 points in, in five playoff games. That's incorrect. He actually has 14 points in six playoff games um, because I missed that he played a game somehow. Um, but the uh, the Swift Current Broncos took game one of the series, 7-2. to two. Uh, uh, Martin Rashavi got one assist, so did Denton Matejok. Um, so he continues his uh, his point his point streak, uh, and then the most recent game, um, the Moose Jaw Warriors scored seven goals, um, and then as was was featured on six of them. Uh, he had one goal and five assists, um, including scoring the game winner. Um, so he, like I said, he's now up to um, in six playoff games. This season, he has, uh, I believe, 14 points now. Yeah, three goals, 11 assists. He had five assists, again, in this game against Swift Current, which um, it's very funny to me that they came away from... Um, they, they got beaten 7-2 to two and were like, right, okay, well, I guess it's our turn to win 7-2. to two. So that's going to be a really interesting game three, I think. Um What's also fun about this series is um, so Dead Matejuk's cousin is is playing for the Swift Current Broncos, Owen Pickering. Um, they grew up playing like junior junior hockey together, like like midget and stuff. Um, and so it's a real kind of family battle at the minute, which uh, which I do enjoy. But Martin Shavi uh, has not been as impressive as Dent Matejuk, which seems fair. Oh, before we move on, actually, one more thing. Um, Dent Matejuk, I believe, is now leading the, the WHL in playoff points um, as a defenseman. Wild. He's, it, I'm so excited for him to come to Columbus next season. Um, Martin Rashavi, five points in six games. Uh, had, like, I think he had, like, a four-point game. Um, or if he had a three-point game in like game one of the of the playoffs, and then didn't do anything for the next three games, and then had an assist in game one, and then a goal and an assist in game two, I believe. Um, so that'll uh, that's that's always fun to to watch when a guy is like, right, I'm gonna get all of my scoring out of the way in one game, and then take a little while, and then take a little break, and then come back, and we'll do the whole thing again. So again, Rashavi gonna be a guy that you that we're gonna be paying attention to for the monsters next season. I don't think he's gonna really move the needle in Columbus, but hey, never say never. Um, he could join the uh, join the the um, the Czechia part of of the Cleveland monsters, which is like I said, always fun. Um, I think that's it for for guys that I was going to cover in the playoffs. Obviously, the Frozen Four happened. Um, oh, congratulations to the Monsters. I didn't mention this in, in the last episode. I did. I meant to. Um, the Cleveland Monsters have clinched their playoff spot. They made it difficult on themselves. They went through like a six-game losing streak when they were like so close to clinching. But they finally did it. Um, they beat Laval after going down like 2 nothing in the first like four minutes of the game. They came back. They won, I think, 6-4. to four. Um, they then lost the next game, but it doesn't matter. They're in the playoffs. They made it. Um, whereas Laval is still kind of fighting for its playoff life. So, ha ha Laval, I guess. Um, as it stands right now, um, looking at the, the playoff primer, um, which the AHL.com has this like daily updated playoff primer where it's like how close teams are to, to clinching a playoff spot, where they like what they would... Uh, which teams they would play if the playoffs started today, things like that. It's really cool. I really recommend it. Just go to the AHL.com forward slash 2024 playoff primer. Um, the Cleveland Monsters are currently third in the North, but they're only two points behind Syracuse. Um, all of the teams have three games remaining. Um, the top four teams in the North have clinched. The bottom team, the bottom seed is still kind of being fought over. Uh, Belleville is currently there with 76 points, and then Laval has 74 points and Utica has 73 points so like none of the teams have been eliminated yet but it's uh it's getting it's getting close so um anyway my point is 
Shout out to the Cleveland Monsters. They could still win the division as it stands right now. They will be pl- uh, they will get that first round by, um, and they will face the Rochester Americans in the first in the div- technically the division semifinals, um, because they get a, a buy to the first to the they get a buy through the first round, so they get to go directly to the division semifinals, um, and then if they win that, they will face the winner of Syracuse and whoever plays in the first round. So at the minute, it's Toronto versus Belleville. Um, the AHL playoffs are weird, but. The Monsters did it, they made it in, um, and now they just have to focus on A, staying healthy, and B, getting all of their players back from Columbus, which they should get basically Wednesday morning, my assumption is um, they'll get Juracek back, they'll get Blankenberg back, they'll get um, Fix Volansky, uh, Gaunt they'll get back, um, Malatesta, Pucha, Carson Meyer got injured because, of course he did, this team's cursed, but... Um, Oh, they'll get Subban and Jack Greaves back as well, of course. Um, this team is going to be stacked when the playoffs start, which is going to be really, really fun. So, like, watch out, Rochester, um, quite frankly, because I think you're not going to have fun in that series. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Like I said, tomorrow uh, we'll talk a little bit about the final game of the season and how we feel about it. Um, try and look at who Gavin Brilly is going to be playing with and what's going to be happening there. Um, that's all coming up on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Blue Jackets. Before I finish up, uh, I want to thank you all for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Locked on Blue Jackets, free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube and on SiriusXM. I have been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter, underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, You can email me if you want to at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.